All right, so this is pre-calculus, section 2.4, library of functions, piecewise defined functions. I like, this is kind of the hippie of functions, very piecewise. Um, we're going to graph the functions listed in the library of functions. These are um, even better than the library of Congress, the library of functions. Um, these guys had to work real hard to get into the library of functions. First, we're going to take a look at the square root function. Um, the x-intercept is at 0. The y-intercept is also at 0. Boop. It's right here. Um, it's neither even or odd. It is increasing from 0 to infinity. It has a local min at 0. And it does not... You can't input negative values into this graph. So, cubed root function, if we are trying to graph f of x equals the cubed root of x, um, we're going to determine whether it's even or odd, whether it's symmetric, and figure out the intercepts, and then graph it. So, the first thing we want to do is even or odd. So, we're going to plug in negative x. When we plug in negative x, the cubed root of any negative value is the same as a cube root of that value with the negative on the outside. So we know that f of negative x is equal to the opposite of our function, which means we are odd and we have symmetry with respect to the origin. When we plug in 0, so we can determine our intercepts, we get out 0. So the x and y intercepts are both 0. When you plot some points, like if I plug in 0, I get 0. We did that. If I plug in 1 eighth, I get 1 half. If I plug in 1, I get 1. If I plug in 2, I get the cube root of 2, which is about 1.26. If I plug in 8, I get out 2. So the graph looks like it's the same as a cube ick, except that it is um, on its side. It's like a cubic on its side. Sideways swimmer. So here are the properties of cubed root x. It is the x-intercept is 0, the y-intercept is also 0, the function is odd, it is increasing on all, everything from negative infinity to positive infinity, it has no local max or min. Absolute value. Um, we're going to determine if it's odd or even, symmetric. Um, uh, find the intercepts and graph it. So when we plug in negative x for x, we put that in the absolute value, and we know that the absolute value of a negative number is the same as the absolute value of the positive number. So it means that when we put in negative x, it's equal to the function of positive x. So that means we're even and has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. f of 0, when we plug in 0, we get out 0. So x and y intercepts are both 0. We put in some values. We put in 0, we get 1. Or 0, we get 0. We put in 1, we get 1. We put in 2, we get 2. We put in 3, we get 3. We put in negative 3, we get 3. It's actually um, absolute value. The way I remember it is because... Um, we have V for value, and this shape is a V shape. So to wrap that up, the X and Y intercepts are both zero. The function's even. It's decreasing from negative infinity to zero, and it's increasing from zero to infinity. It has a local minimum right here at zero. The constant function. Um, Constant function is um, when your function is equal to b, when b is a real number, it's represented by a nice flat horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at your constant. Identity function is just um, a linear function. It's where I plug in 2 and I get out 2. I plug in 7, I get out 7. I plug in negative 1,000, I get out negative 1,000. It's called the identity function. It's a nice line. 
um, crosses the x and y axis at zero. Boom. Square function, also known, I call this quadratic, makes a nice parabola, nice U shape. Cube function, we talked about this, it's the swimmer. Lovelies. Square root function. I call this the rainbow. Square root's kind of like a little rainbow. Um, and we have to be careful because we can't put negatives in there so it stops at this point. Cube root function is a sideways swimmer. Reciprocal function. This is kind of new. We we deal with it, but not we haven't dealt with it as extensively as our other functions. It's a one over x has a nice um, asymptote not only at x equals zero but at y equals zero. So we get um, we get two kind of diagonal U shapes that. Um, try not to equal zero because we can't have zero in the denominator so that makes it not equal to zero anywhere else. Absolute value, nice little V shape. Alright, so greatest integer is kind of a new guy to us. Um, what he does is he takes whatever value you put in there and finds the greatest integer less than or equal to it. The greatest integer less than or equal to it. So if I put in 2.5 it'll spit out 2. So it keeps me on the integers. So take a look. If I put in negative 1 half, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to negative 1 half, boom, bumps back down to negative 1. If I put in 1 fourth, It'll bump me down to the greatest integer that's less than or equal to one fourth, which is zero. Put in one half, back still back down to zero. Put in three fourths, back down to zero. So it keeps you at the same integer until you get to the next um, whole number. And that looks like this. So here I here I'm at negative two. It's going to keep me at negative two until I get to negative one then it's going to bump me up to the next level. This is also called a step function for just the reason that it's going to keep me at negative 1 until I get to 0. Then it's going to bump me up to 0. Keep me at 0 until I get to 1 and then bump me up to 1. It looks like you can put it in your um, graphing calculator. Um, it's the INT function. I did look up, um, Desmos does not have the function, but it does when I googled um, Desmos greatest integer. It did have, um, if you follow this link, it'll take you to a greatest integer function and you can change, um, it'll allow you to graph it. So you can change the, um, it has a parent function that you can fuss with to get a greatest integer. All right, I love piecewise because it's they're uncomplicated. It's just a connection of functions, and you define them for intervals, and then you connect them all together at the end. So it's like we could all be functions together. So, for example, in this case, I have three different functions. Um, from negative 1 to 1, I have negative x plus 1. From at x equals 1, I have 2. And then anything greater than 1, I have x squared. This problem is asking us to find um, the values of our functions at three different spots. So I need to make sure when you plug these values in, you plug them into the right one. So at 0, that's this guy. At 1, that's this guy. And at 2, that's this guy. Um, we look at the domain. So we'll look at our input values and the graph to find the domain. I'm going to graph it and then use the graph to find the range. Okay, so when I plug in 0, that's this function, I get 1. 
when I plug in 1, that's this function, the middle function here, I, my function gives me 2. And when I plug in 2, we square it to get 4. So it's uh, 1, 2, and 4. The domain goes from negative 1, and since this is just x greater than 1 and there's no restrictions on x squared, it's not like a square root or a um, fraction, so um, it goes from negative 1 to infinity. And negative 1 is included because of this less than or equal to sign. So if I look and I go to graph this, you just go start at your smallest value, which is negative 1. I know that is, I plug negative 1 into here, and I get 1 plus 1, which is 2. That's that dot right there. At 0, we know we are at 1. At 1, so if I plug in 1 to this function, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That's here. It's an open circle because I am just less than 1. And then we hop up here, and at 2, at x equals 2, sorry, at x equals 1, we are at y equals 2, so this point here. So if you look, there's an open circle here and a closed circle here, because at x equals 1, we are right on 2. And then, anything greater than 1, I'm, I'm a square function. So I go make an open circle at x equals 1 because I can't actually at that point equal it. And then it starts up with the quadratic forever to the right infinity. Alright, piecewise. The range, if I look, is there any minimum restrictions on the range? And you go, oh, I, I don't go anywhere below zero. And in fact, I don't even touch zero, so zero is not included. And this side goes off to infinity. So my range is from zero to infinity and beyond. All right, so let's look at um, a piecewise function in the real world. In the summer of 2009, Duke Energy supplied electricity to residents of Ohio for a monthly charge of 450 plus 4.2345 cents per kilowatt hour. For the first 1,000 kilowatt hour supplied in the month at 5.3622 cents per kilowatt hour for all usage over 1,000 kilowatt hours in the month. So we're going to find three things, the charge for 300 kilowatt hours in a month, the charge for 1,500 kilowatt hours in the month, and if C is the monthly charge for X kilowatt hour, develop a model relating the monthly charge. All they're asking is to find a piecewise function. That is, express C as a function of X. All right, so let's do this. So for 300 kilowatt hours, that is this 4.2345 cents. We make sure we convert it to dollars before we multiply it by 300 and add the $4.50. So these folks who use 300 paid $17.20. For B, we are at the higher rate because we're over the 1,000. Um, oh, for the for the first 1,000, we pay 4.2345. Two, three, four, five cents, and then anything over that, we pay the higher rate. So we go for the first thousand, we're paying four point two, three, four, five cents. For the other five hundred, we pay the five point three six two two. And of course, we add our four fifty service charge. Add all those together, and we get seventy three dollars and sixty six cents. All right, so let's put together a nice little function for that. We are going to, um, for from 0 to 1,000, it's the first rate times x. So here's this first rate times x plus the 450. For anything over 1,000, yeah, for anything over 1,000, we have that initial 1,000 charge. 
at the lower rate, plus the 450, plus whatever is left after we subtract out our first 1,000. So then if we simplify that down, so we multiply this through, and we distribute and add the 450, and then distribute out this, and combine like terms, we get 0.053622x minus 6.777 for anything over 1,000. So what that looks like is you can see this line slopes. Um, is different than once we get to 1,000, it has a little bit higher slope which matches the rate change here. Da, 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 da. And that's the end of the